I tell you what, uh, we're in the middle of deadline week, and I uh, appreciate you coming to the conference room. And I've written a few things on the whiteboard. I kind of want to go over a little bit uh, today. Uh, of course, we're always talking about education funding. And uh, on the Senate side, one of the big expenses we're looking at in education funding is science textbooks. Uh, we always have $33 million as a line item. Uh, we've added $27 million to that. That's a $60 million expenditure just for textbooks. But I also, also want you to keep in mind that through the CARES money, they've received an extra $600 million in the common education. And then under the American Rescue Plan, they've received about $1.49 billion. And so education will be doing good uh, this next year. Uh, they'll be well funded. I think you'll see some bills coming out trying to define how they can use some of that money. But nevertheless, it is a top priority for us and always has been. One of the major areas that we're talking about is Medicaid expansion. And the cost is going to be $164 million. $138,054. That is a certified number. That's exactly what we need to come up with. Now, because of all of the extra money coming in, and especially in the American Rescue Plan, uh, we've got an enhanced FMAP already of 6.2%, and uh, now we've got an extra 5%. It's still one-time money. It's a lot of money, several hundred million dollars. And there's a thought out there that simply says, let's use some of that money to pay for Medicaid expansion that kicks in July 1. I am not for that. I don't care how big the pot is, you don't use one-time money to pay for an ongoing expense. And the people of Oklahoma voted that they wanted Medicaid expansion. This is an annual expense and must be paid for. So we're having discussions on that. Last year, when we looked at a, a very hard budget crisis because of the pandemic, we've been making double payments into some of the pension programs. And so we diverted some of those payments, not taking anything out of the pension programs, but just diverted some of those payments. And so this year we got some cash. And so if we pay that back, it's about $128.7 million, or we just simply pay going forward $133 million. Uh, we may be somewhere in this number that we want to say, we don't want to continue that two-year program. We just want to do it this one year. And so we're looking at that number. The film is big in Oklahoma. Remember, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, I put out a, a, a press release on film and what it means. Uh, this week, they started filming Killers of the Flower Moon. Over $120 million investment in Oklahoma. That is tremendous. And keep in mind, we deal with a rebate program. And uh, the rebate program says you spend money here first, and then you get it back. And it's, it can be up to 35%. And so we have a film here that simply says uh, that we want to enlarge our cap to $50 million. We want to enable other people to be involved in Oklahoma. And I want to say this is an Oklahoma bill for Oklahoma industries, for people who move their companies to Oklahoma and who work in Oklahoma. We often hear that this money is going to Hollywood. That is nothing but political propaganda. These are about Oklahoma jobs. We talk about diversifying our economy. Uh, this will sure enough do it. You're hearing a lot this year about tax cuts. Just want to say on the corporate tax cut, if we were to pass that, it would have about a $32.3 million impact uh, this year on our budget. It would have an additional $99 a year, or $99 million a year, uh, until it reaches $323 million. And so that's the value of the corporate tax. Income tax, if we did the quarter point income tax reduction, it would cost our budget about $71 million this year, and it would be about $180.7 million the second year. Whenever we did the revenue raisers a few years ago, uh, we added 1.25% sales tax uh, on motor vehicle tax. And uh, so we said, well, we're back on our feet again. We'll try to take that off. The Senate passed the bill, sent to the House to take that back off. That's about $148 million. Not sure where that's going to go, but nevertheless, that's something that we're looking at in this particular session. Redistricting. We do that every 10 years, and uh, we'll have to be back in special session later this year because of the congressional redistricting. And uh, we know we'll be here for a minimum of five days, and so we're looking at a, a minimum cost of that. You can figure on the Senate side, it runs us about $10,000 a day to be extra here. And so it's not a whole lot of money, but nevertheless, just want you to be aware of it. Savings. Savings is big to me. Uh, we had a savings account this last year when the pandemic hit us. Oklahoma did pretty well. And so this year, it is my plan as appropriations chair to make sure we hold back at least six or seven hundred million dollars. Uh, your bank account, mine, that's a lot of money. But when we deal with a thirty billion dollar budget, that's not a whole lot of money. And we need to make sure we hold back some of our money into savings. Last year, we also, because of the hard times, we had a, a bill that said we're going to have one hundred and eighty million dollars uh, for the next two years that we're going to be able to bond out and then take that money and use in our general revenue fund. Uh, we're doing well. Matter of fact, we're running above estimate this year. And uh, we're running so much above estimate, we might even make a deposit of $20 million into the rainy day fund. There's no reason to do that. And so we can use $180 million there for roads. 
In eastern Oklahoma, we have the McGirt case, and that has impacted Oklahoma, and it's, in my opinion, it dealt with major crimes only, but that's not the way it's being applied. It's being applied uh, into civil cases. It's being applied to misdemeanors, and now then we're having at least two counties in Oklahoma that children are being involved, that child abuse cases are being dismissed, and it's something that we need to address. And so the Senate's position is that we want to put $10 million to the AG just simply so that we can fight some of these McGirt cases and make sure that the people of Oklahoma are taken care of. So I know that's a lot in just a few moments, but just wanted to bring you up to date where we are.